Hi guys, it's Tanya Lee Davis, and it's Saturday, July 28th, and I figured I'd give you another Scooter Girl campaign update. I feel very fortunate, because a lot of really amazing people have um, reached out to me in various aspects of, you know, um, whether it be pol politicians, uh, other advocates, um, and a lot of train staff, which has been fantastic, and uh, everybody seems to be really behind trying to come up with a solution and I wanted to read out um, I got a fantastic email from a train guard who is completely on board with me I don't want to mention his name or, or what uh, train line but he has come up with some really fantastic stuff uh, ideas and one of them we were talking about you know the app uh, all train operating companies, TOCs, need to work together on an app that is both for passengers and staff to use. Uh, specifically for passengers, they should be able to book assistance up to 30 minutes before traveling. For those that don't have access to smartphones, there should be a desktop version. And for those that don't have the facility either or cannot use these facilities for mobile re mobility reasons, then a free phone number should be available from all the TOCs to book assistance on the same system. For staff, train crews should be able to log in on their work smartphone and use the train head code to see what assistance is required and by whom. They should also be able to book assistance on behalf of a passenger on the app itself if required. Station staff should be able to log in on their computer and use their location to see what assistance is required by them are required by whom and to be able to confirm they have arrived and have boarded their service so the next point of call can confirm that they will attend. This would also help notify guards at unmanned stations. Also, they should be able to amend requirements in times of disruption. For example, if the book train is cancelled and the passenger travels on an alternative service or route. Disabled toilets, huh? How many times have we had issues with disabled toilets, people? Oi, oi, oi. I keep getting uh, urinary tract infections and ended up in the hospital because I'm constantly holding it. I realize that. That's a little bit TMI, but it is a reality for many of us. Disabled toilets. It should be ensured that all disabled toilets are in operation at all times. If it develops a fault, then it needs reporting and fixing at the nearest opportunity or taken out of service. There should never be a lack of this facility on a train that is running for more than one hour. Some older trains that are in service, such as the Class 153, have no disabled toilet facilities and should only be used for short-term or short-trip services, unless coupled to a unit that has full facilities. If there's a fault reported on the train on the service ha and on the service has no facilities, then it must be announced at stations both audibly and visually with the service announcement departure board to warn passengers of the lack of facilities on board. They can then decide whether or not to travel and manage uh, to take a different train. Does your scooter fit? Well, scooters come in all sizes, and it's acknowledged that some of the larger models are not suitable for traveling on public transport due to the size and weight. Therefore, a proper description of the permitted size and type should be made much clearer at stations and should uh, and shared with mobility shops, a bit like they do with cases on a plane. This can be done by painting a box on the floor near the customer services for a scooter to be assessed. What a great idea! If the scooter fits in the box, then it can travel. Then, to ensure that a scooter can travel and is not refused, some TOCs have, a, a dot, have adopt a pass card system, which I think is a good idea. This should be adopted nationally so that you can pop down to your local station on your scooter and get it checked out and be issued with a free pass card that is valid for the whole rail network. The card can state the model, serial number, and size, and whether the scooter is needed for use during the journey, for example, to use the toilet. It can also be advised of any potential restrictions on board. There should also be suitable provisions for an alternative parking area on board trains, providing a person does not need to remain or use their scooter whilst traveling, traveling so that a wheelchair scooter-bound person can utilize the space. 
Also, in the aforementioned app, a facility where you can enter the serial number of your scooter, which will give you an electronic pass card pro providing it is an acceptable model and have a checkbox for whether you need it during travel. It would, of course, be necessary to declare that a scooter has been replaced by a new one, so then a new card can be issued for free. The pass card could even have a two-year validity so that a scooter can be checked again to ensure it's the same scooter to prevent potential fraudulent use of the pass card, which may result in the facility being deemed unworkable. Well, the wheelchair area on the train. National policy needs to be put into place that the area is to be given the following priority. Persons that need to remain in their wheelchair or scooter have top priority. Persons that don't necessarily need to remain in or need to use the use of their wheelchair or scooter once on board become the next priority. Push chairs, prams, and luggage have no priority in this area, regardless of whether it is first class or standard. For those trains where accommodation is only available in first class, the passengers should you using a mobility aid and needing that area should be given a free first class upgrade and treated as if as any first class passenger. If the area is not needed for any mobility aid, for example, the local services where space is limited and can be busy for short bursts, the area can be used for purposes such as push chairs, luggage, uh, on the understanding that they must be removed by the mobility uh, by a mobility uh, required by a mobility impaired person. Signage. The disabled area of a train should have large, clear signage visible inside and out, stating the priority of the area and discourage people to leave items in or block the area. Also, it might state that push chairs and luggage must be removed in this area if needed. This is a very this is very important as clear signage can often prevent conflict situations. Staff training. Staff need a clear understanding of what the needs of the mobility impaired people are and need to be empowered to show flexibility and understanding. Ah, so that is some valuable insight from a fantastic train guard who supports the scooter campaign, and I cannot thank him enough. And uh, if anybody else has any thoughts, please either make a video or send me an email uh, through my website, TanyaLeeDavis.com. Uh, today, I am up in Edinburgh, Scotland. It's a beautiful day, but I'm heading down to Newcastle. Uh, I'm taking a break from public transportation this weekend because I have my mate, Carrie Ann Guthrie, the redneck comedian, uh, driving me around to limit my stress. So I am performing today um, at the live theater at the Jester Fall. Uh, comedy festival. So if you're in Newcastle and you want to come out and check my actual size show, I would really appreciate the support. Uh, keep tuning in, sharing the videos, keep uh, supporting the Scooter Girl campaign. Um, I'm still getting tons of emails and uh, the press is still interested. So let's keep fighting. We're in this together, no matter what type of disability, uh, invisible or not. So stand tall, everybody. The revolution is accessible. Thank you guys. Speak to you soon.